Hello everyone, thank you for watching. This is Hadrian. Let's play some more Total War Attila in our Crown of Charlemagne series. So we are currently trying to finish off the type of Barcelona because they came in, they were here in Barcelona, and they tried to come up and take Narbonne and these other areas. And they did, in fact, take Narbonne. So we have to take it back. Thankfully, our brother is helping us, but we're not entirely thankful for that because we don't want them to take any more territory than they currently have. This is our brother. This is where our brother's helping us. We want brother to stay here. Thank you, brother, but go away. <laughs> That's basically our current attitude towards Carloman's kingdom. And as I've said many, many times in the campaign already, our brother is, in fact, already dead. Let's see, we can do some additional units there. I'm just doing anything I can to increase the size of this army, which is really just a garrison army. And have give them the ability to improve public order in this in these areas because we need the income from these areas we've just conquered admiral edelhard additional authority and additional zeal for you okay let's go ahead and end the turn and see what happens so since we attacked them over the past couple of turns the caliphate and the Taifa of Barcelona have just been reeling a little bit. I mean, the king, you can see, is now running up there. He, he looks very, very... His shield is not looking good. <laughs> Our war weariness has increased. How's that? All right. Well, our brother came and took Urgell, which is very frustrating, and I didn't want that to happen. So what we're going to have to do is move as quickly as possible to retake Narbonne, so that he doesn't do it in the next turn, because he might very well attempt it. So this this army is going to go ahead and move there to Narbonne. Public order is going to suffer in the area we left behind, but we're just going to have to deal with that. And let's see what we can do here. We need to go ahead and build some churches in this area to increase religious influence. And it would be good to have some additional we don't really need growth anymore but maybe additional wealth perhaps Squ don't have i don't have room to really do anything so now yeah, we'll do a water mill because that'll improve our income from some of the buildings that are already here we really need to do more than that but our income is just not allowing us to at the moment we still have 1837 to spend Let's see if there's anything we can do here there's really not but this monastery is almost done in Santander. That will help with public order a great deal. Let's go through our other territories really quick. West Neustria, you're one of our top income makers, aren't you? Yes, you are. What can we add to you to make you even better? Nothing at the moment. It's all too expensive. Crap. All right. Arnulf, our priest... Reduce corruption in the local province. Nordebert, one of our governors. We need to give him additional authority and zeal. Yeah, the authority will help with public order a little bit. Not that it's needed in his province, but hey. All right, we're going to go ahead and take this governor that we accidentally placed in Frisia. And we're going to kick him out. <laughs> Because that, that was just a dumb mistake. It was a rookie mistake. Alright, so the provinces... Let's see if we can go ahead and appoint someone to... Wilsey. God, I'm making myself look like such a noob. I don't actually... I haven't spent this much time appointing governors in a while but as i mentioned in the last episode i have discovered I've, i found a really cool guide all right cool so we're able to put him there all right how many governors can we have six there you go i found a cool guide for it's for the western roman empire in the game but it talked about ways that you can kind of sort the provinces according to maximum income which was an interesting thought. So 
So I'm trying it, basically. Alright, let's end the turn. And hopefully our brother will not take control of Narbon. It looks like he is trying to take control of it. We're going to auto-resolve. So we're reinforcing him, basically. So we might have just helped him retake Narbon. Okay, good. He didn't take it. Smart move, brother. Looks like we just had some rebels pop up in the area. The f this force needs leadership now that its commander is gone. Maybe I had a... Interesting. Warriton. Household lost. Okay, apparently our son just died. Charlemagne's still alive, but our son died. How did our son die? We'll have to take a look at that in a second. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just give Anselm... Oh! Interesting. Charlemagne just died. <laughs> it wasn't Warriton. Okay, sad day. At least he managed to be Holy Roman Emperor before the end. Let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, Charlemagne just died at the age of 73. Wharton is now the general. He's in Eastphalia. He's up here. So now this... That's going to be a problem, actually, because now... Charlemagne's abilities were part of what was helping public order improve so rapidly in this area here. Sad day. Okay, let's see. What can we do? We have a rebel problem. We no longer have a rebel problem. And we'll go ahead and auto-resolve this as well. Just undo the damage Barcelona did a little bit. Okay. And Narbon belongs to us again as well. Why is our income suddenly so low? Our income is literally 74. I don't... I, I would be lying if I said I understood why our income dropped that low. Alright, so additional... Wait, no. I don't want that. Let's do additional cunning. And some additional integrity and public order. Alright, so it looks like they tried to build a mosque. We're going to demolish that. Alright, let's look at what civic research we can do. Hmm, this research will give us 30 additional Imperium points. Let's go ahead and do that, and it will uh, allow us to build the Cathedral School as well. Not sure what that means, but sounds good. So, what does our territory look like at present? Don't know why I clicked that button. <laughs> Alright, so we are in yellow. This is our brother. He managed to take one little piece of territory down here, which is very, very annoying because... It essentially means that we have to make sure that he doesn't have any armies down here when we eventually attack him up here. Otherwise, we'll be fighting him in two different places. Very annoying. Alright. Let's end the turn. Alright, and comes 145 again. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, interesting. The Typha of Barcelona. Okay, I'm going to fight this one on the field. Because this is this is their king, and he's doing a kamikaze attack with the last of his army, which is in a very weakened state. The only army here in Agen is just the garrison, which is some spearmen, some archers, and a cavalry unit. <laughs> we'll have to see how it goes. Loading, loading, loading. Taking a sweet time loading, in fact. In war, we must always leave room for strokes of fortune and accidents that cannot be foreseen. Polybius, Greek historian. Okay, they're going to attack from over there. What 
can we do? Oh, okay, this looks like a map that we fought on previously. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put a barricade up there. We're gonna put our archers up there. So it's actually saying right now that we are not in a good position to win. Sorry, I was deciding whether or not I wanted to listen to the, the general. Look at the, <laughs> look at this. Look at they're, they're trying to get through this field. They're like, oh god, what do we do? I'm confused. These guys have figured it out. Come on, guys. It's like one of the smallest units, but they still know how to do it. All right, so... We might have to be somewhat clever. Hopefully, they all come this direction. It's interesting that the game was saying that we had such a good chance of winning, but now that we are in the battle, it's actually saying it's a small chance. This unit is really spread out. I've never seen that before. Okay, so one of our towers is starting to go to work. Alright, our archers are now able to fire. They'll be able to fire on the general soon enough. There's only nine of the general's unit left. Should we use flaming shot? It'll reduce the reload time, and I want to make sure I do as much damage as possible. No, we're not. Chill out. Come on, guys, bring it. Ready for orders. May the good Lord protect us. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> What's happening right now? Look at this. They're just like, hey, guys. Cup of tea? Fight them, guys. I'm so confused. All right, so that unit that was attacking the barricade is already gone. so confused. I should be able to spread out the... Oh, there it is. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and send our spearmen down to fight the general and hopefully kill him right now. This is actually the leader of the type of Barcelona, so... Yeah, he's surrounded and dying. So far, he's still alive. He's the last one standing. He, that's that's literally that's that's him. <laughs> he's literally the only guy left, and he's just like, nope, nope, you can't kill me, can't touch me. Ha ha ha. He's just he's taunting us from a distance. There, he's dead. And there is giving us the victory. End battle. Heroic victory, it says. So somehow that army survived. I should have killed them off. I was expecting them to die because of how overwhelming of a victory that was. A new pope has been elected. Wonderful. Roggenfried's loyalty is wavering. Alright, so public order is improving here. But it's not improving fast enough. 
All right, so we've retaken Narbonne. Let's go ahead and move this army back to Girona. We can build something here that might help. Toll Sanitation 8. Yeah, additional wealth from industry. We'll do something in Toulouse next turn as well. So Urgel, unfortunately, was ours. Now it belongs to our brother, which is just the height of annoying. But we will deal with that in time. So we're once again doing a little bit of a public order dance. My Caliphate wants a peace treaty. I say no. You are at war with us, and that's the way it's going to stay. What's happening here? All right, so... This is the same army coming back to fight us again. And it's saying that our chances are lower. I don't believe it, but we'll fight it on the battlefield again. <laughs> so, similar battle. Looks like the unit's fully recovered, too. So we're going to set it up the exact same way. And I'll fast forward it so it doesn't take too long. Very unusual. So they're just they're basically just trying again. Alright, so they're attacking from that direction this time. Okay, that's actually not convenient. It's not convenient at all. I'm going to set up the spearmen to stand here. And we're probably going to have to move around a bit. Oh, did I set up a barricade? I guess I didn't. Oh, well. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> oh, what is happening? Alright, so they have one unit that seems to be... Heading off in a different direction, I could potentially overwhelm them with cavalry. Because the rest of their army is going this direction. This one little sword unit, only 33 men standing. Meanwhile, I have 40 horses here. Alright, so these units are almost in range of our archers. Archers will be able to do some damage starting now. I'm going to have them attack the general just wholesale. Fire every last arrow they have at that general and hope to take down that unit before long. Alright. Nothing remains of that tower now. Alright, so we're taking out those swordsmen. The enemy is going for our general. Protect him. Alright, we're gonna try and finish off that cavalry. Interesting. It's saying that the combat is even between the horses and that uh, armored swordsman group. So that might not have been a very successful charge. But their new general is dying. That's all that matters. Alright, good. New general is running. What's happening over here? Okay, finally. These swordsmen are losing decisively. And... These spearmen are also losing. Meanwhile, their general is running off that direction. Like a chicken. Alright, this time we're going to run them all down. We 
because I'm annoyed. <laughs> Got things sped up so that that will not happen again. Our cavalry are kind of taking their time. But we'll get to them. Alright, problem solved. There's literally, how many guys is this? Six? Where's the boundary of the map? Not far enough away. Or not close enough, anyway. That's what I meant to say. And you're gone. Jerks. Alright, heroic victory. Maybe our war weariness will go back down after that nonsense. God, I wasn't expecting that to be a more challenging battle. The direction they came from was a much more advantageous direction. Alright, now that army is actually dead. Which is what matters. Alright, the Typhoon of Barcelona no longer even exists. Thank God. Alright, so public order is skyrocketing in Marca Hispanica, which is the new province we control that used to belong to the Typhoon of Barcelona. We just need our income to go up. I was checking taxes. Like, did I lower taxes at some point in the past and completely forget about it? <laughs> Let's take a look at some other possibilities here. So our, it's our army upkeep. That's what's really doing it. Our army upkeep is, I mean, this is reminding me uh, of, and this episode's running a little bit long, I know, but I just want to touch on this real quick. This is reminding me of the army upkeep in, uh, I'm sorry, of the city upkeep in Vanilla Attila, where you can't fully upgrade all of your cities to a certain point. You have to kind of manage what cities are strongest. So maybe now we have to manage what armies are strongest. You know, we can't necessarily have a whole bunch of these top level units which seems silly to me um, because in past total war games of course you just continually upgrade your armies and you get more and more awesome so that's a bit of a difference with uh, age of charlemagne it seems so what we'll do this was charlemagne's army originally since it's no longer charlemagne's army we'll reduce its size a little bit and that will increase our income We'll also decrease the public order boost a little bit in that area. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and cut this episode here, and we will jump right back in. I don't know if you guys can hear that dog going crazy outside, uh, but I don't know what's happening. Anyway, that distracted me. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I upload new episodes of Crown of Charlemagne every day at 12 noon EST. That's Eastern Standard Time, or if you're running by Greenwich Mean Time or any modification of it, that's GMT minus 5 at 12 noon. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next episode.